Let's take a look at Big One Extreme 2. So I already know what's wrong with this game. Last night they turned the reader off because the down direction wasn't working. So in order to get to this switch, this little oval part comes out. And to pull that out, we gotta go inside this door. And once we unscrew it, we can push it through, pull it out. And now we gotta do the same thing on that side. And this part fell out. And now we can see underneath here. And we have two seven millimeter nuts that need to come off. Actually, it looks like four. There's one right there and one back here somewhere. And now this whole assembly should come up. Let's unplug the button. Ah. Now this is one of those press fit ones. There it goes. I unplug the connector from the joystick module. And looks like we have to unplug the LED connector. This one has a little tab right here on the right side that I gotta get my fingernail into, but then it comes out just fine. And now I can pull this free. Man, we're still closed, so I'm just gonna kinda tuck this out of the way for now. And we can take this back to the office. And here we are. Now inspecting this thing, you can kinda see all the little switches right there on all the sides, right? On top, left, bottom, right. The right one, which in this orientation is our down, or whatever direction wasn't working, is the switch that looks like it's further in than the other ones. And if I try moving it, it doesn't click at all. You see, that one clicks. Uh, that one clicks. And can I get the other one? That one clicks, right? But this one does not. So it looks like we have a bad switch. Let's unscrew this PCB and take a look at it. And now this should come right up. And you can see the switches are a part of the PCB. <clears throat> and now we can get a better look that that one clicks, that one clicks, that one clicks, but this one just does not. Now I don't have another one of these boards, nor do I have a switch that exactly matches this one. You see this switch has contacts that come directly off of it into the PCB. And today is Saturday and I really need this claw machine back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this switch, which you can see is the exact same size as the other ones, and I'm going to make it work. As long as the common, normally open, and normally closed positions are all the same and they match up, I can reuse this with no problem. So in order to get this one off, I'm going to cut as close to the switch as I possibly can, right on that terminal right there. So let's find my sharpest pair of snips which I think are these. Confirm that I am gonna cut the right switch. Yep, this bottom one. Well, that's an interesting turn of events. Suddenly, it wants to click now. Now they all click. Did someone just pull down so hard on this that they jammed it? I'm not sure, but I don't think I can trust the integrity of this. So I'm gonna replace it anyways. All right, let's cut these two. And there she is, nice and clicky, but unreliable. Now let's take this switch. Let's confirm that our normally open, normally closed, and common are all the same, and it looks like they are. Now I'm gonna cut the contacts on this switch, that way they somewhat closely match how long those are. Just like that. I made that one a tiny bit too short, but it should still work fine. Now let's line this up on here. I'm probably going to wrap this in electrical tape just to hold it in place for me. Just like that. Just one quick wrap. I shoved the screw in there just to hold one hole in place. Because only one hole on each switch actually goes all the way through. The other one is blind. So with the screw right there holding it, electrical tape stopping it from moving, and my pins pretty close to being lined up, let's solder the switch in place. And let's see if we can't solder this together. There it goes, just like that. Yeah. Let's clean it up a bit. Put a little bit too much solder.
There we go. That one looks good. And now the bottom one, which you can't see as well, but I can. And I think that looks good. So there's what those two look like. And now with those two secure, let me take the tape off. Now I'm gonna bend this pin just a little bit to where it lines up a little bit better. Damn camera won't focus, come on. Uh, too much. Uh, okay. It's about there. there. That looks like it lines up pretty well right there. And now for the last one. Let's see if I can't solder this one back. And there's that one. I said they all look pretty decent. I did burn the plastic a bit, but that's okay. It shouldn't affect the performance. We still got a nice click out of it. But let's test it with a multimeter just to be sure. And with my probes in place, no beep. I press it, beep. No beep, beep. Now let's test the other one. Now I have a beep, and if I press it, the beep goes away. Okay, well I'd call that a successful switch replacement. Let's take the screw out. Let's put this back onto here. And putting this back on in the same orientation is important. Otherwise the directions won't match up in real life. Now let's start putting our screws back in. Okay, that should give us enough to test it. Uh, let's come back in here. Let's plug the reader back in. No, I'm broken that card. Let's try this one. There we go. Alright, so let's try forward. Good. Let's try right. Good. Let's try left. Good. And now the moment of truth down sweet look at that it moves in all directions that's what we like to see and let's see if I can't win on camera am uh, I a little off maybe oh ho, ho, yeah look at that hold it hold it hold it Sweet. Okay, well now that we know it works, the only things we need to plug in are the ground and our LED connector. And right here is our LED connector. This plugs in right into that third missing slot. Right there, our LEDs are back on. And then this ground slides right over that little spade terminal right there, which I need to tighten. All right, all there is left now is to put it back together, which you don't really need to see me do. Bye-bye.